Good morning. It's about 1035 on Friday, the 11th of February. It's Jeff Christian from CPM Group in New York. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about gold and silver and inflation. And mostly I'm going to talk about inflation. We had CPI figures come out yesterday uh, and we saw gold and silver prices along with a lot of other prices shoot up in, in reaction to that. Uh, and then they all came back down. And as we sit here Friday morning, Gold and silver have pretty much given up all of the gains that they had on Thursday in reaction to the inflation figures. And platinum, palladium, copper, and other assets have also declined. So I want to talk a little bit about that. But mostly what I want to talk about is the inflation figures and where we are. This is a spectrum of black to white. And I want to talk about this because the world is not black and white. And I've spent my life telling my clients and others that it's not a matter of black and white. And that, in fact, um, you need to think in terms of shades of gray. And prior to 2011, I used to say that in presentations after 2011, it became a little bit awkward. Um, and in fact, somebody even, well, we won't go there. Uh, so, one of the problems that a lot of people have is they think in terms of black and white. And the reality is that the world is a spectrum of shades of gray. And that's a critical issue to pay attention to. So before I talk about inflation, I want to talk about U.S. gross domestic product, real growth in the United States. And it's again, it's a matter of black and white. You hear over and over again uh, that last in 2020, we had the deepest recession since the Great Depression. It, that's actually not true. In 1947, we had about an 11% contraction in GDP. In the Great Depression, it was even greater, it was about 13%, and it was persistent over a long period of time. The recession that we had last time, we had about a 3% contraction. That's pretty bad. Uh, but it's a fraction, it's a third, it's less than a third of what we had in the Great Depression and in the recession of 1947. And yet you hear these guys pontificating on the internet and elsewhere about how the world's going to collapse. We're in this massive depression, now we've got hyperinflation, and they're talking in shades of black and white. And the world doesn't work in black and white. And if you invest based on concepts of black and white, or if you vote in terms of concepts of black and white, you're gonna get it wrong time and time again. So it's true in real economic activity. Yeah, we had a bit bad recession. Um, and by the way, take a look at this. I mean, we talk about this chart all the time. How many people realize that we had about 36% real GDP growth just before the stock market crash and the Great Reset uh, and the Great Depression. <clears throat> the highest inflation since the early 1980s. Yes, it's true. It's half of what we were at. We were at 14.7%, I believe, at the peak of inflation in 1979-1980. And we were in a period of 10 years of very high inflation. That is, by American standards, what we call hyperinflation. And you can see, going back, this, this table, this chart goes back to 1947, uh, interestingly enough. Uh, and you can see that we had some inflationary issues, as well as deflationary issues, back in the post-war, in the immediate post-war period. Not unusual after a world war. But again, putting it into perspective, Yes, we have a real inflation problem. And yes, the monetary authorities are addressing it. And yes, it's the highest inflation since the 1980s, early 1980s. And yes, it's half of what it was then. And it's lasted for about nine months so far, as opposed to a decade. So perspective is very important. This is the data from yesterday's report by the Bureau of Labor Statistics on January CPI. And you probably can't see it. 
It's very problematic in some ways in that the inflation that we saw in January was across the board. It was food, it was energy, it was non-food and energy, 7.5% year over year in terms of all items, 6.0 in terms of all items less food and energy, which are often excluded. But if you look over the last nine months of high inflation, what you see is that it's been very limited. A lot of it was petroleum-based energy products uh, in there and used cars, and then new cars came in and some other factors. But what we saw in January was the rest of the economy catching up with the inflation that they had been experiencing in, in petroleum-based energy costs, food, uh, and used cars and new cars. So we're seeing the overall economy and other groups having pricing capacity to pricing power to increase their prices to play catch up. Now, a lot of people like to look at year over year inflation and that's where it is. And that's where you see the 7.5% in all items and the 6% in things. And look here, back in January of 2021, 12 months ago, we had inflation at about 1.3%. Very important. Inflationary pressures started building in March, got higher in April, and they've gone on. And we're measuring January 2022 after a very strong economic recovery and, and uh, the beginnings of an expansion with very low interest rates and a lot of money that's been pumped into the economy through fiscal policies more than monetary policies. Uh, we're looking at the inflationary consequences of all of that. But putting it into perspective, a year ago in January and February, the Fed and mainstream intelligent economists who know what they're talking about were worried about low inflation. I wasn't. I, you know, you know, I'm I'm quite happy at 1.3% inflation. Uh, I don't think that there's a need to drive inflation up to 2%. Uh, and I've said that for decades. But there was a view that inflation was very low a year ago. So we are looking at a short-lived phenomenon. The question is, is it short-lived or is it long-lived? Our view, even more so than the Fed, is that we're still looking at a relatively short-lived phenomenon. But I'll get back to that in a second. <clears throat> Those of you who know me know that we have been focusing not on year over year, but month to month. And that's important because that tells you what's actually happening in a month. Looking at year over year says, so yeah, the prices were very low in January 2021. We were coming out of the lockdown. The vaccines were just starting to be made available. Uh, we had had a major recession in 2020. We hadn't really started uh, booming as an economy until the fourth quarter of 2020, beginning of 2021. And if you're looking at year over year, you're looking at you know comparing prices in January 2022 to a very bleak low inflation period a year earlier. If you look at the month to month, you can see what happened in January relative to December, November, October. And you can see in October, the, change, the month to month change in, in CPI was 0.9%, which was as high as it had been in July. Uh, it came down to 0.7 in November, 0.6 in December, 0.6 in January. Still very high, still three times the size of the 0.2% increase in January 2021. But that feeds into the view that what we've seen is, you know, we've been measuring prices year over year in 2021, measuring price changes year over year. What was going on in July of 2021 relative to July 2020 when the world was shut down and no one was buying a lot of stuff? So you had this very high year over year figure. 
we had a very high month to month figure too. But as we go forward now and we start looking at April, May, June, actually, you know, it's, it's really important. Again, the increase picked up in February, March got bad and it was bad from March to July. Came off very sharply in the third quarter, picked up again in the fourth quarter. Now, going forward, we're going to be measuring those people who look at year over year, and we look at year over year, but we look at month to month too. Measuring inflation year over year in 2022, you're going to be comparing 2022 price changes to 2021 when we had high prices and sharp increases in prices. So as we go forward in 2022, these annual figures should be expected to come down and come down sharply. And a lot of people are going to say, hey, <clears throat> inflation in fact was transitory. And hey, inflation is not so much a problem. And hey, maybe the Fed knows what it's doing. And then you'll have those people who say, oh yeah, well, fiscal deficits don't matter. Fiscal deficit spending and debt do matter. But there'll be people who will be saying that over the course of 2022. And that's important to gold and silver, which is what we're here to talk about. Because right now you've got a lot of people who are very hyped up on hyperinflation. And it's that black or white world. The world's going to go crazy. It's going to fall apart. We're going to have hyperinflation. You've got to buy gold and silver. The government's going to have no choice but to call in your money. Just outrageous nonsense, right? Uh, but as the year progresses, you know, right now we're January 2022 compared to January 2021. What happens when it's July 2022 to July 2021? You're going to see lower inflation figures on a year over year basis. And people are going to say, oh, inflation is not a problem. Why do I continue to hold this gold and silver that I bought at very high prices in 2020 and 2021? So that is a risk. For gold prices and silver prices as the year progresses. I should say one other thing. Every year in January, the Bureau of Labor Statistics modifies the basket of goods and services that people buy. They do this based on a survey of thousands of Americans who contribute information. This is what I bought last month. And uh, it's very I guess some people buy the same stuff year on year out, but <clears throat> consumer purchasing habits change. And so the BLS adjusts the basket of goods and services for which it measures prices and collects data from volunteers, citizens who fill out forms every month. And every year in January, the BLS adjusts the components of the the consumer price index. Nothing nefarious. They're just doing their job, trying to keep up with buying habits of US citizens. I say that because some people who apparently are a relatively new entrance into the commentaries about the global economy, the US economy, inflation, monetary policy, fiscal policy, gold and silver, seem to think that there was something nefarious with the fact that the BLS in January, as they do every January, adjusted their index. It just didn't happen. Okay. So that's inflation. Now, let's talk a little bit about interest rates because there's an interplay between interest rates and inflation. And interest rates have risen and 10-year uh, uh, notes, treasury notes are now at 2%. And that's no surprise there. And the increase in inflation, in interest rates, probably is insufficient to turn off the economy. Now, when you had 14% inflation, you had 21% interest rates, and we went into a recession. We're not at 14% inflation. We're not at 21% interest rates. We're at 6% core inflation, 7.5% if you want to call all items, on a year-over-year -year basis, 0.6% month-to-month. And you're talking about 2% nominal interest rates and negative 4%, negative 5.5%, depending on what you want to use as your basis uh, for inflation, real interest rates. So interest rates are going to rise. They're going to rise further. It's been well publicized, not just in the last month, but for years. 
uh, and interest rates are going to rise, and that's probably going to quell inflationary pressures. The mathematic thing will also kick in, and people will become less concerned about inflation. That, as I said, poses risks for gold and silver short-term price moves. They've rose on inflation yesterday. Uh, they hit CPM Group's short-term targets that we had, 1840, I'm not sure what it was for silver, and now they've dropped back down. And they're sort of trading in ranges. Those of you who subscribe to our services, the retail investor product services, or the other services like the PMA, know that we still think that gold will reach 1860, perhaps even in the next three months, but probably sometime this year. Uh, but we also look at, at gold prices sort of trading sideways this year with some upward bias because of a variety of economic and financial factors. We do expect gold to rise to 1860 within the next few months or over the course of this year, but not immediately. Meanwhile, there is downside exposure as people say, gee, I just took off those black and white glasses and I'm looking at shape the world in, in, in a more realistic view. We do expect silver to reach 2550 or so within the next few months or over the course of this year, just not right now. So to sum up, ask us for advice on how to make profitable investment and financial decisions. And the first thing you have to do is stop thinking in terms of black and white. Understand the complexity of the world, the economy, the markets. Stop listening to people who just don't know what they're telling you, or they do know it and they're purposefully lying to you. Stop listening to the guys waving their arms and telling you that the world is falling apart. Because compared to 1980, the economy, inflation, interest rates are in pretty damn good shape. Uh, think in terms of shades of gray, because the world doesn't move in black and white. The world exists in shades of gray. And when people tell you, when they use the term the end, this is the end, it's like, this isn't a book, it's not a movie, it's not a TV show, it's life, it's the world. We don't think terms of the ends, we think about what comes next. And that's how you make money on investments. We have our open forum for our clients coming up on the 22nd of February, week and a half from now. We've been getting some interesting questions sent into us at info at cpmgroup.com to address, and people will be able to ask us questions at that uh, open forum online uh, coming up. Our yearbooks, uh, we're now working on our gold yearbook as well as our silver yearbook, moving toward releasing them in, over the course of April, May, and June with PGMs kicked in. We will be doing a uh, online seminar on energy and metals uh, and energy and materials because we'll include hydrogen in there uh, in the middle of March. So we're starting to work on that. You may plug into us in any number of ways, the Retail Investor Program, if you're a smaller investor, uh, we provide research, we provide consulting. We do not provide psychological counseling. Uh, if you really are caught up in, in some of those issues, you need to seek professional help elsewhere. We'll talk to you about the economy and the real world and politics and, and commodities, uh, but we can't help you with conspiracy theories. I mean, if you believe in them, you need a, you need. Uh, we provide asset management, commodities management, and investment banking and investment advisory services. You can find out more about us at cpmgroup.com, uh, and uh, you can buy into some of our services. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Uh, take care. Take care of other people, too, and we'll talk to you next week.